Today in the Pinball Workshop, we're going to work on getting the Pinball Pimp stencils installed on the Flash Gordon. There's a couple things I need to do before I do that. I've got the cabinet upstairs already get prepped. We'll look at that here in a minute. And then we'll go ahead and get the stencils kit prepped and then get on and get on the fly. So, let's get started. When you receive your Pinball Pimp stencil kit, uh, you'll receive them just as they are today. You'll get a paint order and instruction sheet. Uh, it's also important that uh, on this specific uh, stencil kit, there is a place to make sure that you're installing the front stencil first, because as the uh, arc right tries, uh, so it gives that kind of wrap around uh, perspective when it comes to the uh, the actual cabinet itself. So what you see here is that not only do you have the paint order, uh, what you'll see earlier is I've already painted the cabinet red and the head red, and then I get the different stencils. So in this case, uh, we'll be painting the black first before the, uh, the side and the front, and then we'll paint gold, gold or in my case, I'm using yellow, uh, last. So when we see our stencil kit here, we have, here's obviously part of the head kit. Uh, this is going to be our left side of the head and our right side of the head. And then we have that here in one sheet. One thing that you'll also see here is you will see some X's that are, are, are marked here. And the reason why we have those X's is that they will match up as a registration point when we go and uh, um, uh, do our other kit. So you can see here the X will pop through. Uh, we also see that the yellow will go on there and everything will match up accordingly. When we move forward from there, we also see, let me pull these out of the way. We also have the front. So on the front here, we see here's where we're, we're matching the, uh, um, the corner lineup for, uh, for Flash Gordon. And then we also have our yellow uh, over here as well. Final here for the two sides, we have our left side and our right side. Here's gonna be the black uh, for left, black for right. And then we have uh, our yellow that is listed there as well. So before I do any type of painting or any type of uh, moving forward with this, the first thing that I need to do is to prepare the stencils. Now, how do you prepare the stencils? What I'm going to be doing is basically removing any of the extra material around the corners. These are the specific corners that I need to match up to my, to the, to the head. Excuse me. And I need to clean these up, cut these in two pieces so I can get ready to start the marriage of the stencil to the side of the head. So I'll go ahead and get these prepared and then we'll go upstairs and look at the uh, cabinet. So quick tip on this side, since the since this side, uh, the stencil is a little bit interesting because we don't have a, a significant corner down here. I'm going to use this up here as my, my um, header point to try to match this up here with the left side. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now one thing also, I do want to also mention here, uh, I, once I get upstairs, I'm gonna, I may have to trim the rest of this side, depending on how this lays up against the, uh, the head with the, uh, the, the, the larger uh, bulky part of the front of the, the cabinet head, uh, this may have to be trimmed. So once I get up there and get a, a point to looking at it, I may have to come back and, and get us a better trim.
All right, we're up here in my garage. Uh, a couple changes that I noted once I brought up the stencils. The first thing is, is uh, I did have to cut because of this. I had to cut this side extremely even with the stencil uh, so that it fits in there nicely against the head and allows the stencil to sit in properly. So one quick note here about the, uh, the ballet heads that was needed. Also cut off any of the other just uh, additional key pieces. Uh, that I thought was needed, and I've got that there. So in order to apply the stencil, the first thing I'll do is I'll try to get the stencil uh, as lined up as possible. Just checking here to make sure that it looks good. I'm gonna drop a paint can so it won't move something heavy to hold it in place. Uh, from there, I need two pieces of tools, the uh, little uh, tool to do the burnishing and then a pair of scissors. So what I'll do is I'll come over to this side. I will separate the back. I leave a little bit of a handhold here, it's just so and what I'm noticing is I'm trying to make sure I don't lose any of the stencil on the transfer paper. So I'm definitely taking my time, making sure everything's getting grabbed. And I'm not leaving anything Uh, now what I'll do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off and now we're going to apply the stencil Just like that. Now it's important here, you can see here in the belly, you want to make sure that you don't leave it behind as part of the, uh, the stenciling process. Now, I will tell you, it is about 90 degrees here in my garage. Uh, the humidity is very, very high. I've noticed that uh, sometimes this gets a little bit sticky and not in a good way. So just be aware of the fact that I'm just going to try to wait till later this evening. But as you see, once that's down, I now have a hinge where I can grab. Again, slow here. Apply a little bit of pressure. Watching to make sure the stencil is not getting stuck as I pull. Bring it up to my other hand. Now I'm holding it all here. And now I work the stencil down. Further, grab the stencil, tuck it in. Okay, and I dropped it. Now it's actually terrible. Now the 
stencil is applied. Just give it one quick over. Feels good, feels nice in there. Now what I need to do is slowly take the transfer tape up. Now, when I do this, I want to make sure the stencil stays on. So you kind of have to, I'm going to start in a corner that makes the most sense here. Definitely take your time here. A lot of intricate pieces in this stencil for flash cord, and I don't want to be in a rush. I don't want to tear the stencil. I don't want to lose it from up from sticking up. So I had a problem here with the stencil wanted to pull, push it back down. Also have an X-Acto knife here uh, that I can just use if I feel like I need to get a piece of it off just so it won't stick. There we go. Again, you just want to take your time. I'm probably going slower than most, but well, you'll just have to deal with it. I'm putting a lot of, I'm really pulling with a lot of, a lot of pressure here. So just FYI, I'm, again, just watching to make sure. Look up to the valley. This is a point where usually, and everything looks good. I had a little one here getting away. Right here on this edge. This little. There we go. So the stencil is now on for black on this side. Uh, all of this other is garbage. I'm gonna put this exacto knife down before I cut myself. All right, so this side is definitely ready to now spray. Now, I will tell you, you know, I when I refinish this cabinet, there's a little bit of over, overhang on the stencil. So I really pushed it. Let me show this. Let me just take this off here. You'll see there's a touch of overhang. And that's okay. Obviously, when I've sanded this, we've lost a little bit of the depth of that cabinet. So I try to push this as, as tight to here as possible. Uh, what I'll do is... Um, I will lay down a line of frog tape in this corner to make sure it gets nice and covered and when I don't have any overspray. You will also see here on these registration marks, there is a cutout right there for those red X's. And that's how the yellow is going to be able to marry up there. Now I will say, if I'm shooting black, I'm going to lose this X. So a little top tip, if you are, take a little piece of masking tape, I'm using frog tape, 
uh, but any blue painter's tape would work too, just to cover these so you won't lose that X once you're trying to marry up the registration for the next color. So did this side, let's flip it over. We'll get the other side ready and this will be ready to spray for black. All right, we're going to repeat the same process here. So this is the, you can see the black head side and this is gonna sit right into this corner. Just make sure to kind of get it married up here as good as we can. Feel good about that. Drop my paint can. Do another quick reconfirm. Actually, I'm going to move my paint can down just a bit. And we're going to start the process again. This time, I'm going to put all my tools a little bit closer to me. Also, an interesting thing here is this is hits sit so tight up against this. Just making sure I've got room to lift this and put it back without it dragging on this corner. So just testing that out real quickly. I think we're going to be okay. All right. So same process again. We're looking to leave the stencil on the transfer and just remove the blue. Again, I'm losing the L's, these in, internal points for the valley, so I just need to make sure I get them both to stick where they need to stay. That time they did. Create my hinge by cutting this out. The only thing also to note here, just a tip, when you cut this blue backing off, try to keep it a very straight line. Don't try to get any ridges or burrs or anything of that nature. It's just going to make your life much more difficult when you go to uh, flip it to the other side. Just put a little pressure, a little pull. And to the end. All right. Now let's repeat the step. This time, we'll hinge this way. Again, shows you when you have a really nice So again, I'm going to sit here and watch. Usually I'll stop once I get the blue back up to my left thumb. Make sure to keep it nice and tight. And start to work it down. And you don't feel like you have to work it all the way down to the, to the actual hinge. Get it as far down as feel comfortable. Then come back again. Pull a little bit more.
to its end. Again, holding it nice and tight, not letting it touch until I burnish it on. Repeat again. Need to remove the transfer tape. Always hardest to get it started, in my opinion. And once you got it started, So I saw that pulling up there. Just gonna give it a it looks like again it's getting a little doesn't want to come off the transfer tape. I'm just gonna give it a little adjustment there, get the stick back down, and we're good to go. So one thing I noticed here, obviously your wood is gonna have a little bit of imperfection. Sometimes you'll notice in that little point right there, there's a little bit of a dig or a, or a dent right there in the wood, causing the uh, stencil not wanting to stick down appropriately. So just take our time, be on the lookout for any stencils pop. You don't want to tear it. Applying really even pull here. up to the other part here where it's been a little sticky right across the valley there we go second side's done so throw all this away again and I'm ready to paint black on the head okay We've got everything masked off. Definitely take the time to do so. You don't want to obviously ruin your red paint or you don't want, in this case, black to be. I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X, which is also recommended. It's a little bit of a breezy day, so I'm gonna try to hit the machine very close. Again, once I spray both sides, uh, we're not gonna leave this to dry. We're actually gonna remove the stencils uh, after about five to seven minutes. So here we go. Trying to get okay. Just checking for coverage. I feel pretty comfortable with everything. Uh, looks good. So let's go ahead and do the other side. It's gonna be a little hard to see here in the, the shade, but I'll make it the best I can.
So I've got everything stood up here. Uh, I now need to let some time pass. Again, we're not waiting for it to dry. We're just basically ready so that it's still tacky, that I can remove the stencil without actually ripping the paint as we be dry. Now, I will say it's extremely humid. I'm, I'm sweating through my shirt and I'm not really doing anything. So I may let this set just a little bit longer than the usual time, but I'm gonna come back here. And the only other tool I'm gonna need here is now my X-Acto knife, because I wanna be able to remove the stencil and get all of it at one shot. And so I may actually use the X-Acto knife to cut off a piece of it so I don't have it hit another place. Or if I get a piece that's stuck, like around these valley, I'm able to do that as well. So all we do is now, let's wait. And we'll check this out here in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna start tearing into this, start removing it. Uh, it's been about seven, eight minutes. So this is definitely still wet. I don't wanna touch it. I do wanna be able to start to remove this stencil. So first thing I'll do is start removing any place where get okay Time to start removing the stencil. It's okay if the stencil obviously breaks, but you want to make sure that you get all the stencil off. Sometimes it needs a little assistance. And I'm not in a hurry, but I also want to make sure that I remove without pulling a I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna pull up the So I've got a lot here, I'm gonna to try to go ahead and cut this back just so I don't get too much 
Uh, this is the way that I like to do it. I'm sure there are other folks who do it differently, but I find this works the best for me. Just don't need to be in a hurry. These L pieces are a little bit difficult, so you kind of have to use an X-Acto knife to get it started. So let's go ahead and continue the rest of this very slowly and surely. So I'm seeing here that this is going to start pulling the other direction. I want to get in here and help lift so I don't pull against the line. If it feels like I'm concentrating a lot, it's because I am. Kind of have one shot at getting this. So you kind of want to go slowly, but also I can tell the paint is, or the spray is, ooh, I'm getting some pull up here. This is not good. Got some pull on my red, so I may have to come back and try to touch that. Okay, and I've got another spot here. See where it's going to go back up. I don't want to pull that awkwardly, so I'm going to kind of, actually can probably even come from here. Bring that down. See, again, against. That's really disappointing right there. But this red's been sprayed for over 24 hours. It's just for some reason I had a little bit of a goof there. So I'll hopefully, the yellow will cover it, or I'll just have to come by and just touch it up with a, with a, um, with a, a brush. So I'm getting close down here to uh, this uh, other transfer or uh, the registration mark. So I want to make sure I get my green frog tape off. I'll just put that there. Watching as I go, I can definitely say the spray has gotten a lot more, has dried out just a little bit more. It's getting a little bit easier to pull. This is 
pretty intricate down here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is wrap this up, continue pulling easy. There we go. So that came out pretty good outside of my little area there. That did not go well, but you know, it is what it is. Let's see if we can't go ahead and remove this side. I think this side will come off a little bit easier. I may have went a little too early on pulling these, but you just never know. Humidity, where you are in the world. You know, I could do this at night and it wouldn't have been as much of a problem, but. Luckily, it's easy fix. Registration areas first. So I don't have to worry about those later. All right. And now we're going to repeat the process. I can already tell you that in this process, it looks like that extra weighting really made the difference. This side seems to be kind of coming off of it better. I don't, I'm not getting as much stretchy on the, uh, I feel like the paint is, is having to strand on me as much. Come on. Pull those bally L's off. And we'll continue going down.
can see here, I'm definitely moving a little bit faster. It's just dried more. I feel much more confident with what's pulling here. So may have gone a little bit too early, like I said a moment ago on the other side, but you know, it is what it is. Oof, another little red spot got pulled, so that's no fun. There we go. And there is the other side. So, looks really good. Again, just that small little red area, this little touch up brush we'll have to fix. But all in all, I'm really pleased. So that's both sides done of the Flash Gordon on the black only. What we'll do now is we gotta let that dry for 24 hours. That's usually the time that it needs to take. And then while we're waiting on that, Let's get the cab in position and ready to stencil.